Hi there. My name's Mike Schlosser. This presentation will show you how you can use negative distances in your geospatial buffer analysis. Now, a buffer is a polygon drawn at a certain distance from a set of features. In this case, a 300-foot buffer drawn around a point feature creates a circle with a radius of 300 meters. Now, the reason we use buffer analysis is to determine proximity or to select other features for further analysis. Traditionally, we think of using a positive buffer distance when we create our buffers. A positive buffer distance creates a polygon outside of our source feature, in this case the source polygon. But buffer analysis also allows us to specify a negative distance. A negative distance buffer creates a buffer inside the source feature, in this case the source polygon. Now, in our example, we want to determine the total area of habitat available for a certain species of wildlife. Now, this species of wildlife has been observed not to forage beyond 100 meters from shore and includes a riparian buffer of 25 meters of its habitat. So, to compute the total area of habitat available to the species requires the creation of two buffers and a polygon overlay operation. The first buffer we're going to create is at a distance of 25 meters and this will represent the riparian buffer. The second buffer is created at a distance of minus 100 meters, a negative distance, and represents the forage extent. Then we're going to use overlay analysis of type subtract or to do an erase that erases one buffer from the other to create the polygons representing the habitat zone. We can then compute the area of this resulting polygon. Now let's get started with our demo. Here we are in AutoCAD Map 3D. We've already connected to the water features which happen to exist in some external GIS data source. The first thing we're going to do then is to create the buffer representing our riparian zone. We select the water features that we want to buffer and we specify a 25 meter positive distance for the buffer. We give the buffer output layer a name, buffer outside 25. And we make sure we merge all the buffers together so that we only have one entity to deal with. This process takes a few minutes, so let's skip ahead to the results. Here we are, if we take a closer look by zooming in, you can see the results of that buffer analysis. That green line is that 25 meter riparian buffer. Now let's change the display a little bit. We're going to first of all change the draw order so that the buffer is underneath our water feature layer and we're just going to enhance the color a little bit here by removing the transparency that has automatically been applied. Like so. Alright, so now we have a riparian buffer. Let's go ahead and create our forage buffer. Again, we select the water feature that we want to buffer and now we specify a negative 100 meter buffer distance. This is going to create a buffer inside that water feature layer. Give this a few moments to create the buffer. And there you can see that we now have our buffer inside 100 meter representing that forage area. Okay, now let's use our two buffers using uh, in an overlay analysis where we take our source buffer, which is the riparian buffer, and our foraging buffer and subtract one from the other using an erase operation. Okay, so that's going to erase one polygon area from the other. And let's give the output a name, something that's easy for us to identify. Let's give it a name of habitat zone. 
and let's give the layer the same name. Just cut and paste that here. We can accept the rest of the settings by default, have it calculate the results, and there you can see the results of the habitat zone. Now I want to restylize this so it's a little bit more obvious to us. Let's give it a, a nice bright color. Let's choose a, a bright green color like that. Okay. There we go. So there are our results. That bright green area represents the total habitat zone for this species of wildlife. Now let's put a legend on here so that we can uh, print this out and so that people know what the green and the blue actually uh, stand for. And now what we want to do is compute that area. So we bring up the data table and you can see there's no area there. So I'm going to actually add a new column using a quick calculation here that contains the area for my habitat zone. So I'm just using a 2D area here and as a matter of fact since my map units are in feet I'm just going to quickly divide this by the value to give me square miles and let's round that off to the nearest square mile. So I'm just going to use a rounding function here like so and tell it that I want zero decimal places. There. We click on OK and there's our results. We have 15 square miles of habitat zone. In summary then, we used AutoCAD Map 3D, an engineering GIS platform that allowed us to connect to geospatial data and avoid the import-export process. Then we used geospatial buffer analysis on our existing features. We used a positive buffer distance to calculate that riparian zone. And we used a negative buffer distance to compute the zone that represented the forage area. And then we subtracted one buffer from the other using a polygon overlay operation. And then that resulting polygon set was our habitat zone. And we applied a simple area calculation to that to come up with the total square miles.